How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be making upside down player gravity and I think this is a really cool tutorial to have because if you're trying to make a puzzle game or any kind of game that uh, you want to trick the user, fake the user out and create like a gap up here that you want them to jump and the only way to jump is to flip your gravity all together, then I think this is a really neat effect and it's actually super simple. So here's what we're going to do. I've copied over this player from my run and gun course and you've actually seen this player in another video when we're setting up player animations. So I've copied over the animation controls. You'll notice that I don't have the input controls. I have the action for controlling the actual animation logic in our every tick. And then I have the actual states to set the animations, but we have no way of triggering this because there's no ground and there's no actual input for the keyboard. So first things first, let me grab the tiled background here. Let me add the behavior of solid to it. I thought I hit the plus. And from there, let me just kind of make this and let me copy this by holding down control and that should be good to go. Let me also set my preview and browser to be NWJS and let's hit play. So just so we can see that there's no controls going on. Oh, the default controls work. Okay, cool. So because the default controls work, you can kind of see some animation here. And it looks like because we haven't actually set up the controls, there's no uh, room for mirroring, mirroring the player or anything like that. Let's actually push this over here and over here. And let's make this a little bit farther apart so we can really demonstrate this effect. Just so the player will have a lot of room to walk on. And the one other behavior I can add here is bound to layout and we can bind it by the edge. Okay, let's hit play here and let's see how this looks. So you can kind of see the top there and I'm not really concerned about the collision box not actually hitting the tile background at all. But here we go, that's our player. Uh, what we need to do is we need to actually now look at this player a little bit closer. So if I select this, this is copied over. We have the platform behavior, the scroll to behavior, and the bound to layout behavior. And in the platform behavior, we have a bunch of properties here, max speed, acceleration. Nowhere in this platform behavior does it show the angle, but there is a platform angle that is controlled. Now we are going to tie this platform behaviors angle to our own angle. So every object gets its own angle and it's got a bunch of positions that it could be in zero through 360. And what we wanna do here is we wanna actually control this angle. So you can see here at zero, it's facing the correct way. But if I put this to 90, then it's not. If I put this to 270, then it's not. If I put it to 180, then it's upside down and that's where we want it to be. So the two angles that we really want are 180 and zero. Those are our upside down and front facing or up, right side up uh, angles. Now to control this, we're actually going to need the other two angles. We're gonna need 90 and 270 to kind of trigger these. And here's how we're gonna do this. We're gonna add an instance variable to our player. You can see I've already done it here. We have our player state from our animations and I just have player health in there. We don't need that, we can get rid of it. Uh, our player gravity is what I added and I put it to 90 degrees. Now it's 90 degrees by default and we're gonna get into why in a second. So let's hit okay. Make sure you do this to your player. And now that we have this set up, let's go to our event sheet and let's make a new global variable. Now this can actually be an instance variable as a Boolean, or this could be an instance variable as a number, or this could be anything you want. This is just a basic on off switch. Let's call this grav and let's give this uh, the initial value of zero. Now what this value is going to do, what this variable is going to do is it's going to control if our gravity is on or off. And we can assume by default that it's on. So zero is going to mean that, actually no, it's zero is gonna mean that it's off and one is going to mean that it's on and I'll show you why. Let's add an event for our keyboard and let's say on key pressed key space and then let's hit B to make a sub event here. Now this sub event is gonna compare just like you would in uh, Boolean if it's true or if it's false, this is gonna compare the global variable. If the variable equals zero, and since it does by default, that's why this is going to mean that gravity is off. And then if it equals anything else but zero, so I'm just gonna hit X to make an else statement. So in this case, we're gonna say if gravity equals one, then gravity is back on. So let's do that first. In gravity equals zero, let's add the action to the system, set the value of gravity, let's set it to one. So now our gravity is off. If it's off, let's set it to on. 
Now, this is only going to work because we are nested in this pressed event and because this is only going to trigger both of these events once when this is pressed. That's the only reason why this logic works. Otherwise, this is just a never ending loop. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add in two things to our player gravity. What we want to do first is if our gravity is off, so let's make a comment here, gravity is off, gravity is on, and remember when it's on, it's normal, when it's off, it's upside down. What we're going to do is we're going to set the angle of the player to be upside down. So let's set the angle to be 180 degrees, and let's push that above this action right here. Then what we want to do is we actually want to set our player gravity so we're going to set the value of our instance variable player gravity to 270. Let's copy these two lines and paste them up here and let's reverse them. So we want the angle to be zero and we want our gravity to be 90. Now the reason why we need these other uh, angles is for when we actually have our keyboard input. So now we are done with creating our gravity system. That was pretty painless, correct? So what we're going to do is we're going to add in our keyboard input for our player. So if key is down D, let's copy and paste twice. If key is down A, and if key is down W for the jump. Now let's put in our jump first because it can stay the same. Let's go to our player. Let's simulate control jump and hit OK. Now that we have that, let's copy and paste this twice. And actually what we want to do here is we're going to check, just like we're checking here in a sub event, we're going to check to see what our player gravity is equal to when we're holding down A and D because this is left and right, or this is right and left. So let's do right first. Let's hit B and let's say we want to go to the player compare the instance variable of player gravity, and we want to find out if it's equal to 270. Let's copy and paste this, and let's make another sub event and find out if it's equal to 90. Now, if it's equal to 270 and D is down, then we're going to be uh, pressing the left. So let's copy and paste. The, actually, let's just drag this down, and let's flip this to left, and then let's set this to mirrored. Object player set mirrored. And now it's actually going to go left if there is gravity or if we are facing, if we are up here, it's going to go left. It's going to go the correct way. Let's copy and paste both of this and put this for here. And then you can assume that it's going to go right and it's going to be not mirrored like usual. Okay, cool. Let's do the same for if A is pressed. So if we're moving left, we want to find out. Let's copy and paste these guys. And what we want to do here is we want to reverse this. If the player gravity and A is down, we want to go right. And what we want to do here is set this to not mirrored. So I can just kind of reverse these. And then let's set this to left. I could have reversed them as well. There we go. That is our gravity system. Now, instead of actually, let me get rid of this. Instead of actually, you know, just having this line here like we normally would, we actually just have them as sub events. So now we should be able to walk normally. Let's test out here. We can walk normally left and right. We can jump, but when we hit spacebar, it should have set our gravity. Oh, there's one thing that I forgot to do here, and that was actually the most important part. If we go all the way up, and this is what I was trying to talk about in the beginning, where this platform uh, behavior actually has an angle that we can tap into and we can tie the two together. We want to tie this together every single tick. Now, this is actually going to give us a lot of control because we can actually then create uh, a different way of doing this, and that's for a, another advanced system. This is going to work just fine, so there's no reason to do it any uh, any other way. So we're going to add the action to our player, and we are going to set the angle of gravity right here. And I guess this is kind of, it probably is tying into the gravity object, but when I debugged it, it didn't change or affect it. So this is really just going to be, uh, this is really perfect for our needs. What we're going to do here is we're just going to type in uh, self, dot player gravity. So every single tick, it's going to set it to whatever this variable equals. And since we're changing this variable uh, here and here, if gravity is off, we're changing it to 270. If gravity is on, we're changing it, changing it to 90, then it's going to affect all of these as well. So let's hit play. And now when I walk left and right and I hit space, now we're walking upside down and we're jumping upside down too. 
and our gravity is actually maintaining its position, which is really cool. Now, if I hit space again, we're back on, and now we're back to boring old platformer game <laughs> where you don't have any cool gravity features like this. So there you go. I hope that this tutorial has helped you out a lot. This is a really fun thing to add to most of your games, and it's a very easy thing to add to your game. So why not have it and why not create cool levels with it? I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a comment if you liked this video and you wanted to see more. I really appreciate it if you thumbs this video up, thumb this video up. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.